it was working on Tyra's show, sitting on that panel for incredibly long hours for them to get their acts together. Don't forget I was the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth season on that show. And, and it was wonderful in, in the aspects where they flew us to marvelous places all over the world. You know, South Africa, Tokyo, uh, Italy, France. We went, we went a lot of places, but sitting next to Tyra for hours and hours can be daunting because she didn't really like me. And we didn't really get along and she never did Vogue. I did Vogue, she did L. I used to constantly remind her of that. <laughs> you know, I didn't really treat her like a producer. She kept saying, but I'm the producer of the show. And I was like, oh yeah, right, whatever. You know, so it, 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 she, they, had I realized that they, the, the, the pick of, the, uh, the, of each show was the, was the choice of Cover Girl, which handed out the winner, the, the, win, the winner's certificates and the winner's $100,000 and the chance to have a Cover Girl contract campaign for a year was chosen by Cover Girl and not the, not the judges. So when I found that out, I was like kind of reticent to even speak up anymore because they weren't taking my valuable words of wisdom um, and applying it to who should win or who should lose. Right. Well, she should have expected it, but once once the expectant came out, you know, you couldn't suppress my cough. I was just <laughs> <laughs> expectant. I, I was just really hacking my way through. And you know, a lot of times there were other judges. I can't remember their names, but they were fun to judge next to. And um, but the but sitting, it would be like doing this show from like seven in the morning to about one one or two o'clock at night. It becomes really tiring to be fresh and and on point. I did all people's programs like RuPaul. I, I did I did a stint on RuPaul. That was fabulous. They treated us with, us with respect, not giving us hamburgers or or McDonald's Whoppers for Christmas presents like Tyra would dole out to the crew. I mean, that's your opinion. Yeah, that's okay. I just don't understand, like, isn't it shocking like how she keeps getting these high profile jobs? I mean, that's a pretty well, good thing. I think, kid. you know, I would be getting them too if, uh, if it weren't for the color of my skin. <clears throat> you know, they put, they, they like diversity on television these days. And, you know, now that we have a fantastic African-American Asian vice president, you know, there's going to be a lot more diversity coming in. Look out for the change. You have to have personality to be on television. I mean, most of the models that have been on TV, let's say like Heidi Klum, myself, Sharon Stone went on to make, to become a movie star. Annie McDowell went on to become a movie star from being a model. There have been several models that have gone on to Rene Russo. different jobs. Rene Russo, who's fabulous, mm -hmm. friend of mine. They've gone on to do other uh, jobs on t in front of the camera because they're able to speak. Do you, yeah. I mean, is Kylie Jenner a good speaker in front of the camera? I don't know. Is Gigi Hadid a good speaker in front of the camera? I don't think so. With the, with the clothing line and the foot and the foot the footwear, Jeezy hired Anna Winter, gave her a million bucks to uh, initially get him on his feet as as far as colors and style wise. And it worked. It sure did. 